physicists at CERN just discovered a brand new particle. Researchers from the Large Hadron Collider Beauty Experiment, referred to as the LHCB from CERN, discovered a never-before-seen particle which has since been named the tetraquark, or TCC+. The EPSHEP, otherwise known as the European Physical Society Conference on High Energy Physics, have stated that this particle is composed of two quarks and two antiquarks, and referred to it as an exotic hadron. A quark is, in summary, the foundation of what matter is made of. These quarks can fuse together to form hadrons. The process is like that of neutrons and protons in the modern theory of atoms. What the EPSHEP meant by calling the tetraquark exotic was that the matter of TCC plus lives longer than any other such particle in existence before it. Furthermore, no other particles are known to contain two quarks and two antiquarks in quite the same way. Within recent memory, there have been several similar discoveries of exotic hadrons, most of these possessing up to five quarks at a time. But the TCC plus stands out even among the strangest of particles. This is because quarks have weights, and the tetraquark has heavy quarks and light antiquarks. The antiquarks in question are also different kinds, with one being an up antiquark and the other being a down antiquark. As a direct result, the decay process of the TCC plus becomes vastly complicated to the degree where it takes an incredibly long amount of time to decay. Inside the world of quantum physics, the discovery of the tetraquark brings with it unbound potential for the future. There is a chance of there being even more particles, like the TCC plus out there, waiting to be found, all of which could increase our understanding of this vast, unknown cosmos which we deem our home. Further studies on this particle are set to be conducted soon, with CERN physicists undoubtedly excited to conduct deeper research into this matter as it might reveal much about quantum physics that was previously unknown. Aliens may have observed civilizations emerge on Earth. Earth is perfectly positioned so that at least 1,715 nearby star systems are in view. It stands to reason that if there has been any extraterrestrial life on just one of those systems, they may have witnessed the birth of early human civilizations. These nearby star systems make up the Earth Transit Zone, or ETZ for short, and with over 300 new stars entering the ETZ within the next 5,000 years, the possibilities for alien contact only seem to increase. Not too long ago, the European Space Agency began a new mission to explore this possibility. The agency successfully launched the Gaia mission, which aims to create a 3D map of our galaxy. Gaia has discovered something truly incredible. The agency found that 75 of the closest stars in the ETZ have been touched by our radio signals. Since humans began transmitting radio signals about 100 years ago, the study found that our radio waves would have washed over them already. According to Lisa Kultenegger, the director of the Carl Sagan Institute at Cornell University. Kaltenegger claims that these selected 75 stars are of the most interesting subset of stars for uncovering extraterrestrial intelligence. The possibility for contact with aliens has always seemed to be a sort of fantasy, but it is becoming more of an attainable goal. If extraterrestrial life does exist among these nearby star systems, it is possible that they could view Earth and even detect our life on the planet. Earth's most telling signs of life are given in the form of atmospheric oxygen and methane. Due to the necessity for oxygen and methane to react to form carbon dioxide and water, the two gases would need to be produced in large quantities for life to be possible. The only sound explanation for atmospheric oxygen and methane is the presence of life, according to Kaltenegger. Astronomers are always on the hunt for these telltale signs of life on faraway exoplanets. These gases can be spotted by monitoring the stars that each planet orbits. When a planet passes between the star and our viewpoint, the star's light dims. The extent to which it dims gives us a great deal of information. By analyzing the features of the star as it dims, it will determine the chemical composition of the passing planet's atmosphere. In December 2020, the Gaia mission discovered some breaking news. 
A report was finalized which contained a complete accounting for the movements of all ETZ stars through time. For the first time, we could take the movement of everything around us into account, Koltenegger said. What Guy gives you is the movement of the star over a couple of years. It has been found that within a constrained time frame, the movement of stars can be intricately predicted. Unless they encounter a gravitational anomaly like a black hole, she said. So with the new Gaia data, Koltenegger and her team could rewind the movement of nearby stars to essentially peer back in time. This allowed them to check where the stars were located 5,000 years ago and whether they provided a view of Earth at that time. They used the same method to look 5,000 years into the future. This allows astronomers to understand what stars have truly been within reach of us and which ones may have felt our radio waves. With this new information, we can begin upgrading our search for extraterrestrial life. Neanderthal diet was carnivorous, shows study of tooth. Neanderthals are an extinct species that lived in Eurasia nearly 40,000 years ago. They are considered to be archaic humans, which means they have some similar traits and body composition to modern-day people. Scientists can typically determine the diet of an animal or human by extracting proteins and looking at the nitrogen isotopes in bone collagen. However, the issue with this technique is that it cannot be used on bones older than 50,000 years old due to their fragility and risk of deterioration. As a result, researchers have struggled to determine the diet of Neanderthals. Their location and region will also provide some insight into what they may have eaten. For example, some of the studies conducted on the dental tartar in the Iberian Peninsula concluded that they preferred a plant-based diet. At the same time, in other areas, it was strictly meat. For one, the Neanderthals in Spain at the Gabasa site were carnivals. A researcher named Clevia Joayan helped to develop the idea of using zinc isotope ratios in a tooth's enamel to figure out what it regularly ate. Zinc isotope ratios are highly durable and can withstand degradation, so they will not be damaged during the extraction and analyzation period. She used this technique to get more information on what the diet of these Neanderthals might have been. To be clear, if the proportions of zinc isotopes in the bones were lower, the animal or human was likely to be a carnivore. In contrast, if the proportions were smaller, the human or animal likely had a plant-based diet. With this in mind, this technique is still highly debated, and many skeptics are still determining if analyzing zinc isotope ratios is enough to assess the diets of the subject accurately. Nonetheless, this new process of analyzing Neanderthal teeth has made waves across the scientific community. Could a large tsunami happen in the United States? The answer is a resounding yes because the United States is located along the Pacific Rim. It's prone to tsunamis caused by earthquakes in the Pacific region. The most tsunami-vulnerable areas in the US are Hawaii, Alaska, Washington, Oregon, and California. While there is no way to accurately predict the time of when it's going to happen, if it's going to happen in our lifetime, it's safe to assume that yes, it will happen again sometime in the future. When looking into the possibility of the next big tsunami hitting the US, there are three primary sources of information that can be used. One is the tsunami catalogues that store significant historic events. Second is by studying the geologic deposits left by mega earthquakes and landslides in different parts of the world. Finally, we can also look at the data from computer simulations that create scenarios of potential big earthquakes and landslides worldwide. Most people have never witnessed a tsunami, and this is a fortunate fact. If you want to have an idea of how powerful a tsunami can be and how it can affect the US, put it this way. Waves that are formed by the wind only travel through the top layer of the ocean, and we have seen how violent these waves can be. On the other hand, tsunamis or waves that are formed by an earthquake or some other strong force like a celestial body hitting the Earth have an extreme amount of force, much more than wind waves, because it moves through the entire water column starting from the ocean floor up to the surface. To estimate the potential damage of a mega tsunami hitting the US, we first need to know which area we are going to focus on. 
As mentioned earlier, it's more likely for a tsunami to occur in the west coast than in the east coast. However, let us picture the possible scenarios for both coasts. If the east coast gets hit, it will cause huge destruction in Miami and New York since these are the major cities. As for Washington, fortunately it's protected by Delaware. However, another threat to look out for is the overflow of the nearby rivers caused by the sudden inflow of seawater. If the mega tsunami hits the west coast, the country's technological progress is likely to be hit since Silicon Valley is located in California. The city of Los Angeles will also suffer a huge amount of devastation as it is along the Pacific coast and the city has a dense population. Regardless of which part the tsunami hits, there will certainly be a significant number who lose their lives. Damage to both private and public property and infrastructures, and not to mention it will slow down any aspect of progress there is in society and government. If the US gets hit by a tsunami, it's likely that Japan and other countries in the Pacific will also be hit. History teaches us that natural disasters can be so destructive that everything can be gone in the snap of a finger. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.